Arr, grog. Hey everyone, welcome to the Cider Shed Podcast. I'm Matthew Weir. I'm joined by Kerry Warbis. Hello, Kerry. Hi, Matthew. Now, we've got listeners in the past that have said they like your croak. Ah. Oh. So. <laughs> You're in for a treat. And I'm not doing a Kirsty impersonation at this point. This is me. Yeah. So if Kerry just made an impression of herself now being attacked by a pig, Catty, <laughs> it would sound exactly like Kirsty. It would actually hurt my throat to do that. Yeah, I've had COVID, for those of you who haven't seen me banging on about it. I came back from Girls Aloud, which was great, by the way. Matthew, you'd have loved it. And uh, don't say anything <laughs> to spoil the moment. <laughs> uh, but on the train back from Manchester to London, there was a couple. I can tr- I can remember them. I'm going to track them down. They gave me COVID, basically. So I tested myself and, yeah, I've got that thing that everyone has sort of tried to forget about. You didn't appreciate my theory that you got it from Cheryl Covid. I'm giving that the silence it deserves. <laughs> you gave it the silence it deserved earlier in the week as well, Karen. Oh, no, that's very good. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I must, this is not a sort of a disclaimer or an excuse. It's another word for those two things <laughs> yep. that I haven't thought of yet, but... Um, Head's a bit sort of scrambled. Haven't done as many notes as I normally might have for this. This could go either way. It could, it'll either be absolute mayhem and chaos or gold. No way of knowing. Or both. Chaotic gold. Well, at that point, let's take a little break and enter the chaos. Celia Sparrow here again. I just wanted to say a vote for me is a vote for the next generation of Ambridge, massive, crotchly, and penny f it. If elected over Helen Archer, I promise to enrich the lives of your children. Under my watch, children will be allowed to take action figures out of their boxes, without recrimination, run free in bubble bath hot tubs, and most importantly, games consoles can finally be referred to by their proper brand names. Vote for me, Celia Sparrow, and let's end our children's blue cheesy misery. Celia? Yes, Daisy? Will I ever have to eat Borsetshire Blue ever, ever again if you're elected? No, Daisy, never, ever again. Thank you, Celia Sparrow. All right, Carrie, let's talk meat. Yeah, speaking of chaos, chaosy meats. <laughs> I mean, I made that up myself today and I'm quite proud of it. We have this situation where meat is going missing. Now, I've been a chef, so I know. I used to get deliveries. I always checked them. It's certainly in Dublin, there was cases of people would bring you something cheaper and then you'd find out they were they were taking that from their fridges and then like selling the fillet steak to someone else at the back of a van. Now, it seems that Casey Meats are a little bit more organized than that. So but not much. No. So the delivery driver that's doing this is obviously like on the make. But I've I've actually had the rep turn up in his private car and give me like fillets and stuff like that before, just like Freddie did with the driver. So like I know that that does happen. As an very... apology kind of thing. Yeah. It's a gesture yeah, yeah. of goodwill recompense. Who knew that meat? I mean, it's bloody pricey, isn't it? Decent meat. It's a commodity that, you know, you can make money on. And then you've got Jason is suddenly mm. introduced. Do you know what his surname is? Do you? Yeah, I do. I looked him up in the cast list. Oh, nice one. Oh, God. Is it going to be the same surname as Marky? <laughs> I don't think we know what Marky's surname is, do we? Oh, I don't, I'm a bit affronted that you laughed there. I thought I was onto something. <laughs> <laughs> is it a name that we are familiar with? Like, is he sort of related to somebody? No, his name's Jason Burntwood. Oh. You thought I was going to say like Jason Meat Stealer or something. <laughs> or Jason Horribin or I don't know, some sort of connection. But it's a weird dynamic between him and Freddie. I think Freddie's beguiled by him and and um, has a slight bond with him. And he's trying to sort of like, oh, yeah, twins and blah, blah, blah. But I think this Jason isn't quite the nice man that he's trying to put himself across as. And he didn't want Freddie touching his boxes that he was loading. And 
he actually confessed to Freddy because he said he'd booked a skiing trip next year for his kids mm. and the deposit's due next month and he's going to have to sell a kidney to pay for it. <laughs> he's paid for the skiing trip with meat. Yes, surely a crater kidney. It's not just the one, Jason. Yeah. It's no longer uh, HMRC wants you to pay 3000 go to Tesco's and buy iTunes vouchers and give me the codes. It's I want the money in kidneys, please. Ooh. That happened to someone that lives not far from my mum. Guy went and believed that HMRC were actually oh, no. sending bailiffs round to his house, so he went to Sainsbury's no, no, and no, no, bought no. three thousand pounds worth of iTunes vouchers. I don't like this sort of thing. No, it's nuts, isn't it? It's absolutely, absolutely the most vulnerable people who are preyed upon, which is the worst. If you do want to have a good time, mm. go onto YouTube and look up the channel Scammer Payback with this guy called Pierogi. He puts himself in the danger stream and oh. gets the phone calls and manages to hack their computers while they're trying to hack him. Oh, I like that. And he has a little voice changer, which makes him sound like an old woman. Mm. For a long, long time, they think they've got the better of him. But he start... there's another guy called Kit Boga as well. Because there are call centres full of these scammers, aren't there? Yes, he manages to even find out their net real names sometimes Brilliant. and pulls them up on it. And he, he speaks uh, a fair bit of the local lingo. Is there a podcast about this, Matthew? It's ringing a vague bell as being a true crime podcast that I've listened to. There might be. So where does this true crime end? We'll find out what happens tomorrow and we'll do a little add-on for that, I presume, Carrie, won't we, if we're in good shape? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it finishes tonight with Freddie is going to track Jason. Oh, Freddy, my darling Freddy. You know not what you do. He's a naive boy. It's not the biggest kind of locale, is it? How does Jason not know mm. that Vince's partner is Lizzie and that Freddy is Lizzie's son and he is to the manor born when they're having that conversation? Yeah, well, it's either that we're supposed to believe he doesn't or he's just sort of playing along naively as part of this whole, I don't know who you are. I am a, I am the one stealing the meat, so I'm going to sort of pretend to be ignorant about things. I really wanted Jason to say, uh, hey, do you remember when that posh twat fell off the roof? <laughs> yes, that would have been good. But, the, but when... the kid there, he went down for selling wobbly eggs. Do you remember? Yeah, what a prick. Did you see his picture in the local rag? What a non. But I... I... When Freddie sort of went, oh, yes, uh, Lily and I went on several of those skiing trips. Like, stop, stop, Freddie, no. You know, this guy's barely affording one. Don't say you've been on several. I thought he was saying he'd been on several trips to Lower Loxley. No, 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 several skiing trips. He definitely sort of dropped in. Yeah, Lily and I went a few times. Uh, well, you, you've sown a seed of doubt there. Maybe I was wrong. I took it to mean that he was saying oh yeah we went a few times skiing did you go on any skiing trips did i fuck? <laughs> and my kids didn't either bloody absolutely ridiculously expensive for any normal household the school went on one in like the second or third year and all i remember was mr <laughs> it left his enormous gray and red ski boots outside in the hall of his room one night and um it's <laughs> got her real 1980s hair hair being involved <laughs> got her hair moves oh great filled them <laughs> and filled them up <laughs> yeah i'm trying to think of the most exotic school trip that myself or my kids have been on. i got taken we went to exmoor there for you a go long weekend and <laughs> at one point they took us to where they keep the dogs for the hunt and they made us <laughs> stand over we had to get up a step ladder <laughs> and stand over a vat of boiling horse <laughs> there you go yeah. This is amazing. What? Boiling horse? What, they, they feed to the dogs? They feed to the dogs, yeah. Don't tell me. You dived in in your, <laughs> in your uh, stars, stars and Stripes swimming trunks. <laughs> yeah, I'm and a, your flip-flops. I'm incredible oak. Yeah. And then there was a little bar in this hostel. And obviously, it was full of kids. And in the evening, the last night, we all had to sit down and watch Tarka the Otter. Everyone was getting a Coke and a blah, blah, blah. And I, I looked down the list and on the drinks list, there was Bash Shandy. Oh, I was like, can I have a Bash Shandy, brilliant. please? It was only at the end of the movie that one of the teachers noticed I was actually drinking half a can of Bass. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was Shandy Bass. 
Oh, maybe it was. I don't know. You've now cast another seed of doubt. It was a shandy made from draft bass, wasn't it? What fish? D- do you don't you know what bass I is? I do, yes. Okay, all right. They made bloody beer this week out of bread or something was going on with bread beer. I, I'll tell you two things, right? Yeah. Ben and Chelsea in the pub and they're like, do you want a drink? Should we get a drink? And suddenly Jolene appears from nowhere and went, how about our bread beer then? <laughs> oh, oh, and then Vince made a hilarious gag about that, didn't he? Saying, can I have some butter with that or something? They were so pleased with that joke. They put it in the episode description. Disgusting. And someone also in the episode <laughs> description. <laughs> Absolutely disgusting. That's insulting. <laughs> someone who did the episode description for Tuesday's episode, I think, misspelt Linda. Well, you know, the joke is more insulting than Linda being misspelled. Uh, but uh, can I... J- I've got a thing in my mind that I've got to say it or else it'll go. It's that I always think, and I hope you agree, uh, that Vince and Jolene have some chemistry when they're talking to each other. There is a little bit of that. Do you think? Have you registered that? Yeah, that bit where he said to her, look, I know the dark world of... Of my pants. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, there's something. A little like, he's always looking out for her. Now, it's either because there is some chemistry or I think it might be that he is covering his tracks because he's linked to the dog people. There's a lot of grey man talk going around again. Where? On the social media, as they call it in the archers. Social media. It'll be that social media that's made everything so popular, won't it? Blake never saw Vince. They never crossed paths. Ooh, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Vince was actually okay with Ben and Chelsea, wasn't he? Weren't they in a, almost in the same scene, or did I imagine that this what, week? What, this week? Uh, let me think, let me think. Was that where... Because Ben and Chelsea were in the pub together, weren't they, with that ridiculous... All of a sudden, quite a few people in the village are going to be allocated roles where they know something about World War II history on a very specific <laughs> subject, yeah. which they're going to present to an audience as yet undefined in Ambridge Hall yeah. on a whim of Linda's because it's her birthday. So suddenly Ben is going to be an expert on World War II nursing and the history of all of nursing. He's going to do a bit of research on that and be fine and um, present it to loads of people. What's the face? Chelsea, she's going to, yeah, I'll do a bit of research. Oh, no, no, God knows what that was. I'll do Go a bit on. of research. No, can't. <laughs> on hairdo, vi- uh, what are they called? Victory rolls and uh, vintage fashion generally. She'll do a lecture on that, probably a dissertation. We can all read it, be published soon, doctorate. And then there was someone else who's going to suddenly do... Oh, cookery. That's what, who's the cookery person? Fallon. She is going to just sort of rustle up loads of, like, World War II food and talk about cooking. All right, George, st- here, stop playing GTA. I want you to give a 50-minute talk on the Dieppe raid and yeah. Operation Jubilee. And, uh, all right, uh, um, uh, Martha... Uh, D-Day landing beaches. You're going to talk about that, okay? Uh, you t- uh, Rosie? Yeah. Was Hitler a bad thing or not, Rosie? Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> Peggy and Jill, you're going to dress up as the Wehrmacht and you're going to run across the field and Oliver's hunting group are all going to take pot shots at you. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, we're going to recreate the Somme in Five Acre Meadow. Pip and Ben are going to kick you all into the silage. You're going to roll around. <laughs> it's appalling this isn't it happy birthday linda you know what better way could linda spend her birthday than haranguing people into being really knowledgeable about something and then presenting it to the whole village in a week she wants a living history museum at ambridge hall can you imagine like turning your home to a living history museum by sort of chatting to five mates (laughs) Can you imagine the the absolute? It's a bit like Phoenix Nights, isn't it? Do you, have you ever seen that? I have. Yeah, I love it. But you know the sort of absolute shambles 
of the actuality of what would happen if a person tried to do that in their local vicinity like come on brenda you're doing this and jeff you're doing this he was going to say like i'll start off in the garden oh god and talk about what happened that morning <laughs> then we're going to go into the living room and ben you're going to talk about nurses <laughs> It's absolute madness, isn't it? And it's a shame because 80 years since the D-Day landings, the thing is, it is an important anniversary, isn't it? The 80th year since the D-Day landings. And and this is how it's being treated. Those young men that gave their lives on that beach. <laughs> oh, no, Matthew. They gave up their lives and their freedom so that Linda and Ben and Robert could bore people <laughs> to death. Who is going to go to this? with a week's notice the captive cast of the archers carry oh oh good yeah yeah i forgot about that so but only about five will be allowed to be heard but there's a vintage ambridge society that we've never heard of before isn't that the laurels the vintage ambridge society <laughs> yeah they should have a cricket team oh the geriat cr crickets geriatric cr cricket wasn't it Kerry, that you coined I did coin it, and now I can't think of how it was said. Jerry, uh, there, we had trouble getting it over the line the first time when we launched it. I seem to remember it was easier then. Everything was easier then, Kerry. Then there was the T20, wasn't there? Why has there not been a tea room 20 type publicity push by Natasha Fallon? I mean, Fallon wasn't directly involved. Her husband was. Uh, but she was kind of Ooh. staying away because he totally lost his <laughs> shit last week. He did apologise to Pat. Pat sucks. And he sent an email to Leighton Cross, but only when Tracy had a right go at him. So it hadn't occurred <laughs> to him to do that before someone told him to. Leighton Cross don't have a bloody computer. They're not even on the grid. Why is he sending an email? Yeah, leightoncross at gmail.com. <laughs> I am so sorry for slacking you all off. Yeah, he's, he's becoming incredibly unlikable, isn't he? Yes. And I didn't used to feel like that about Harrison. No, he's not. Is there that. any case to be made for his grief? Of course there is. And I don't know why you're questioning that. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way that Fallon pulled him up on, you keep saying we're pregnant. Oh, yes, yeah, she did, didn't she? Yeah, yeah. I think that might have been on Friday of last week. But yeah, I was glad that she did that. Because I think they left, they kept putting that in there to kind of... Mm rub people up the wrong way and that he said you know our child and she said it's not a child it's a few cells and you know the struggle is real in that relationship but it, hearing him speak to Tom was an interesting one because he went in to speak to Tom who was talking to spring onions and the ch his twins were asleep nearby and you could hear Harrison go, oh, they're bloody lovely orchids. They're all lovely. So you thought, oh, here we go. And then he's like, Harrison, you're stroking the end of the leaks. Yeah, blow. I bloody love these two <laughs> aubergines. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Tom tried, didn't he? But Tom trying, often not a great thing. He tried to empathise with him and said, like, yeah, I didn't really know how to feel about you know when we lost Ren, then revealed that he has often taken his twins to the remembrance place remembrance garden well, we haven't heard that happening have we and harris was like oh i do wish i had somewhere to go to remember and that, what, what, oh fallon said um you're hijacking their grief i thought that, that was a killer line i know perhaps last week but um I don't know. It was interesting that Harrison and Tom were bonding a little bit about their shared experiences, but they're not the same. In terms of like interaction with Harrison, I found it quite a strange point that Harrison said he's been not actively, but kind of subtly avoiding Chris and vice versa. He said, we're not avoiding each other. We just haven't met up because of the Alice thing, uh, which is soon to become the George thing. God knows when that's going to drop. Yeah. How soon is now? Who needs a longer run up? Pat when she's bowling or George to fuck Tilly Button? Because this is going on forever. I did love Pat um, teaching Chelsea with a cheese gone scone at the cricket. And the fact that George 
has got a tomato watering social media <laughs> post. <laughs> Nothing gets past him, does it? I know. And then um, he did that awful gag, which was about, I cannot remember the whole line, but it was to do with ketchup, ketchup. And Pat literally was going, ketchup, ketchup. It could be funny. It was a real um, her from the good life moment. Penelope Keith. Yeah. I mean, she does live with Tony, so her sense of humour has been severely dulled (laughs) in in the last few years. I was listening to The Archers out loud, which is quite rare, like the the rest of the household can hear it. And um, Chelsea's, God, it's like listening to a tomato funeral (laughs) was ringing out in the kitchen. And my son sort of was in the room and he just looked at what, at me listening to this tomato funeral (laughs) programme. Why did the tomato turn the radio <laughs> off? <laughs> oh, did you hear a right funny thing that Harrison said to Pat when he was apologising about, you know, his poor behaviour to her, when he said she should be just doing googlies all the time last week? No, you did really well. Every time we had it in bag, you came back farting. I think he said fighting, Kerry. No, I'm pretty sure it was farting. On the quiches again. Yeah. Speaking of food. Oh, yeah. So they're going to make a uh, Walton pie, a frugal dish made with fruit. Not Ugh. fruit. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. What is Carrie. it made with? It's it's just vegetables, not fruit. Sorry, I've got tomatoes in my, just in my mind. Just vegetables. That's not good. No, but, it, you know, it's it's rationing, isn't it? Apparently, oh. the pastry used to be made with some kind of like mashed potato or something. Oh, I heard mashed potato pastry mentioned. Yeah. I didn't know what the filling was. Have you ever had a Dan Walton pie? <laughs> <laughs> it's just full of shit and pictures of Meghan Markle. <laughs> You've only got to look at Dan Walton's face to know that everything that's going on there. It's a German word. I think it's Gelgenfeischergeist, which is face in need of a fist. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but look at Anyone, Dan Witten. <laughs> yeah, feel free to correct me on the pronunciation of that word and the Wehrmacht that I said earlier as well. I am kind of a quarter German, so I should do that better. But you know. It's very good. Yeah. There was that bit where they discovered the letter from Aunt, was it Aunt <gasps> Connie? That was all very weird, wasn't it? Jolene started reading it. Yeah. First of all, she found like a little picture that Fallon had drawn. Oh. She said, oh, look, this is lovely. And Fallon went, I'm on fire in that moment. Yeah. What's lovely about that? I'm, I'm burning. <laughs> She's like, no, that red blob, that's a fire engine. <laughs> Don't you remember the good old days, Fallon, when we used to set you on fire, my love? <laughs> yeah, we'd had a few dough beers. And things used to get a little bit out of hand, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'd give you your paints and crack on. I had a baguette yard of ale and I just lost myself. Oh, Sorry. Then were the days. That's why I kept this bloody picture. And then, <laughs> then uh, they find this letter. Oh. Great Aunt Connie who was serving out in Egypt. Oh, yeah. She went like, you know, like, I, I can't keep this facade any longer. And I thought, like, she was like, well, I can't show you the rest of the letter, Fallon. I thought it was going to be like, Sunday the 11th, had a very productive meeting with mein Führer. Yes. (laughs) It's the next line of the letter. Do you know what? Uh, if, if anyone one day just happens to be fast forwarding through the podcast and they get to this moment, they're going to think like we're some far right organisation. Oh my goodness, you couldn't be further from the, the truth. Hello, I'm Helen Archer. Hang on, can you turn this thing on, please? Hello there, I'm Helen Archer. I'm definitely not Celia Sparrow with a voice changer. Anyway, you probably know me best as that stuck-up twat who makes rancid cheese and forces my workers to be viewed like caged animals all day. If you are voting for me in the upcoming election for Ambridge, Massive Crotchley and Penny F*** it, we urge you not to forget, the vote takes place on July the 5th. Definitely. July the 5th. Not July the 4th. I'm Celia Sparrow and I approve this message. Oh shit, wait, I mean no I don't. Leg it! (laughs) 
we just had a little technical hitch and we had to stop, save everything, and then we're going to come back and go again. And we had a little chat in the interim, trying to think about what we hadn't covered. And mainly, uh, I said to Kerry, look, we need to do some horse. Mainly. <laughs> <laughs> Always thinking, Matthew, always thinking. I can always trot these jokes out, Kerry. Just, uh, uh. <laughs> and if you, if you want, I'll rein it in. Nay. <laughs> Don't do that. I'm doing this on the hoof, by the way. Absolutely repulsive. Badger! Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, we're saddled with finishing this, aren't we? Oh. There, yeah, you're, you're thinking, are you? You're going to no, edit okay. out this massive gap where you're. No, I can't cut. I've got nothing, Kerry. I've got nothing. <laughs> hey, do you, know, do you know what I missed this year? Stirrup Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> it's a double blow. Oof, boof. Uh, yeah, so cinnamon has got strangles. Or was it spangles? Strangles. Oh, those old sweets. Why was Oliver clip-clopping around with Duke at the point at which sort of terrible diseases were being worked out? Because Lillian was, she'd missed five Cobra meetings. The strangles thing conversation had started and then Oliver was like, clip-clop, clip-clop. Would you not go, whoa, (laughs) get back. We're investigating a potential thing here. Do not bring your horse in here, which is then going to be ridden off. Did I remember that wrongly? Well, he did clip-clop up while they were having that conversation. Yeah. But what are you expecting them to do? To say, get back, get back. Yeah. We've all got strangles. I am. All oh, right, okay. I don't right, think This is a danger that. area. But anyway, someone is going to cause mayhem with the biosecurity cross-contamination shit, aren't they? Who will it be? And no, well, it ain't Alice. She's up in bloody Putney. Will it be Harry? Fried onion rings. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. Hope it's Pips. It's Pips. <laughs> <laughs> Lillian was there saying, you know, I, I do, uh, I do rather blame myself, really, for Alice getting involved with the really fucking <laughs> Harry that I wanted to fuck <laughs> like a ride him like fucking red rum i blame myself darling i really do yeah wasn't there a hint of the fact that alice had fucked up the paperwork because the records couldn't be found mentioned also i'm sure i'm do you know i'm sure alice was drinking before all this happened so she sort of retrospectively twigged that there might have been some drunken slip up Well, there was that morning that the morning after the night before when Alice went, where are you? Where are you? And opened up and poured herself a drink. The next morning, she was up very early and very manic at work and doing loads of stuff. Oh, yeah. Hinges and stuff like that. And maybe she just maybe there was a mention of the horse in that. And she completely overlooked Mm. processing the papers. I loved that the owners of Cinnamon just happened to be on a long distance horse trek. (laughs) Something. (laughs) Oh, no, no, it's impossible to contact them or anyone to do with that family. They're on a long distance horse trek to somewhere without any means of contact. And the most studious and hard worker at the stables, Joanne, no one's ever heard her. Oh, I didn't hear Joanne. Joanne got mentioned a couple of times. They were like, jo- Joanne's a brilliant worker, but she can only do so much. And I was like, yeah, well, she can't, she can't come on mic. Oi, off mic, on mic, coming on mic. There was another person who was mentioned this week who I thought, oh, hang on, who's this? Not giving them a name. Do you know who I'm referring to? Is it someone we heard? No. (laughs) They were just referred to. Oh, the new barman. Yeah. Who is the new barman who's struggling in Lily and sort of went, I won't have a massive G&T because I'm going to skip over the bar and help you out. I reckon it's a guy in a really bad disguise. I reckon it's Marky. Yeah, what... (laughs) One of the dog gang. Yeah. What's the disguise? It's two dogs on each other's shoulders in a human costume. (laughs) Just waiting to have a second go on Kenton when the time's right. No wonder they're struggling a bit. Yeah. It's very hard to serve a pint whilst pulling if you're a dog. Pints are a bit slippery. (laughs) Much like uh, Cranford and Crystal have trouble answering the phone at their office. (laughs)
It's Friday night. I was quite enjoying the social side of things in the pub. I did say a while ago when the pregnancy Chelsea Ben storyline kicked off, I thought they would it was going to be a disaster initially for them. Mm. Into it, and it wasn't really bad. It was a disaster for Ben, wasn't it? He went to pieces. But I actually said at the time, I don't know if you recall, Kerry, that I think eventually they will end up being an item. They're knocking about quite a bit at the moment, aren't they, in a very cash, natural sounding way? Freddie sounded a bit crushed that he was in the pub. He's like, oh, if it's a date. Mm, yeah. And then the three of them set off on their jolly jape, like the famous five but only three of them without a dog. <laughs> it did go a bit Enid Blyton, I thought, when they sort of set off on this detectivising. It sounded like a lot of meat was being handed over, whereas what we've been told so far was that it's just bits and bobs here and there. Maybe this meat that is going missing is being... Collected. Collected and then dropped off in an enormous meaty drop. Yeah, I did say that that Jason wasn't to be trusted. I was rather hoping that they were going to get Freddie involved in D-Day and then Jason was going to bring his two kids to the D-Day event at Ambridge Hall and they'd be like, and next up, Freddie Pardeter, the heir to Lower Loxley. <laughs> He'd just be there going, what? Yes. In some sort of uniform and everything, looking like a right tit. I mean, obviously he doesn't have any access to Google, this guy, Jason, because he would just know who Freddie was anyway, wouldn't he? Well, yeah, and also, it, the gossip would go around the workplace, wouldn't it? Like, this new boss person and who they are and stuff. I would have thought by now that they would know. And Vince, on the face of it, he seems to be concerned for Freddie's safety, but I think he's just worried that... Fred is going to stop eating meat because he said, I don't want you doing any veggie lanty stuff. <laughs> it was a funny little episode Friday nights, wasn't it? There was like victory rolls being done. The pubby bit. Freddie going a bit weird about Ben and Chelsea. Chelsea seemingly has never heard of the D-Day landings. Yeah, what will happen? Where, where's this meat story leading us what's the purpose do you think freddie and vince are going to fall out somehow or or do you think possibly freddie is going to cover for jason and just let him off with a warning oh gosh he did sound devastated when it was jason and not antonio yeah uh, i think that's most likely that it's going to drive a wedge between him and vince mm -hmm. same yep Victory rolls. It's a dish. There's like a food called a victory roll as well, though, isn't there? It's like a meatloafy thing wrapped in pastry. What's a sausage roll? No. Like... <laughs> I've never heard of it. So, yeah, we do these add ons in the presumption that there's going to be something you know, <laughs> major. <side -tech. laughs> yeah. yeah. And really, there isn't, other than the fact that Tracy wore her victory rolls to the pub and Fred has discovered Jason's a meat thief. It was a kind of a. Uh builder to something that's going to happen. You think the BBC are trying to normalise conscription again? <laughs> it did sound like um, Rishi Sunak might have been involved in the script writing. <laughs> <laughs> did you see him today out on the campaign trail and there was a kid in front of him with his, his phone running, camera running on the phone, and he went, do you want a photo? And he goes, no, I just want to ask why you hate young people so much. <laughs> oh... I saw that footage of um, he was talking at some workplace and there was a girl slightly eye-rolling and swaying around behind him and that bald bloke from his security team kind of shuffled along and stood in front of her. Yeah, really obviously, wasn't it, as well? Yeah, yeah, from the sidelines. Someone made a very good video of him where it was like every Tory disaster and he just, they keep zoom, zooming him across the page to still like be in front of it. So we've got like <laughs> shit coming out of water, party gate. This guy just keeps sliding from left to right and blocking the image. <laughs> he needs to sort of slide across in front of Rishi Sunak, really. Shall we have a little break and then go through the, the mailbag? Yeah, I'd like to do that. This evening on Borsetshire TV. 
a shocking new documentary looking into one of Ambridge's most deadly corporations, will take you into the heart of how and why so many lives have been lost to this evil behemoth. And as a local politician, I, Celia Sparrow, will be searching for justice and answers for you. Don't miss tonight at 8 p.m. How Bridge Farm Fresh Killed My Family. That's how Bridge Farm Fresh Killed My Family at 8 p.m. Kerry, we got some emails. Can you believe it? I can, I can, but I don't know what they are. I like this bit where you surprise me with content. Okay, well, the first one's from um, Trudy. Now, Trudy's going to probably crucify me for wrongly pr pronouncing her name. Ooh. But I think it's Takarsik. Hello, Matthew and Kerry. Well, it's been an exciting few weeks on the Archers, hasn't it? But I want to talk about Roy. It looks like the predictions of him heading to Bulgaria may be spot on. We have heard Kirsty talking about Roy chatting with Lexi and implying it's a regular occurrence. I think that might be a nice way to wrap it up with a happy ending. Well, Roy would be cool with that, I think. <laughs> um, oh, <dear. laughs> oh, sorry. Talking about Kirsty, she was painting Rex's boat as it was damaged by car debris after the accident. How on earth? But this makes me think we missed a great opportunity to have the car land on Rex's boat. <laughs> Why have we still not heard Joy? Now, obviously, it took me a while to get to this email. Yeah. Will she be the one to uncover the truth <laughs> about George? It's looking likely, isn't it? Keep up the good work and ignore the raging reviews. Everyone is over angsty with the current plot lines being so emotive. It's not you, it's them. Until next time, Trudy. Oh, that's lovely. I like that car debris sounds like some sort of French actress <laughs> cheers trudy trudy once accidentally invited me to a gin tasting event oh you never let that lie i oh, never will never will yeah even though i don't drink gin i, I was you know it was i bet that. you would if you were invited to bloody tasting it hung in the air for all the 30 seconds that invite before she retracted it yeah it's hung in your life for about five years this is one from kate down in Australia, she said, Dear Kerry and Matthew, since you drew my attention to the existence of old episodes of The Archers on YouTube, thanks to the helpful badgery Tom Archer, Tom Archer is the name of the account on YouTube, by the way, oh, you yeah. can find all the old omnibuses there. I've been catching up on the ones I missed. One omnibus, 29th of November 2009, had what struck me as an unusually high number of characters and actors we no longer hear. Ooh. So we've got in this episode, Coriander. Okay. Jack Woolley. Mm hmm Vicky, Vicky, Mike. Vicky. Oh, yeah, Mike Tucker, Vicky, yep. Hayley, Nigel. Well, yeah, whatever happened to Nigel? Never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> old Robert. Well, we can't do much. <laughs> Come on, Kate. We can't do much about old Robert. Jennifer, Joe, Matt, Peggy, Phil, and the ghastly Leon. Leon. Yeah, forgot about him. Come back, Leon. <laughs> Come back, Leon, yeah. All is forgiven. Uh, she says, it might make a fun omnibus for us to listen to when you guys take a break. Lots of Christmas talk and the first deck, the halls. So that's the 29th of November, 2009. Yeah, let's do that one then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we do that um, in on. the run up to Christmas. Thanks for that, yeah. Kate. Nice recommendation. Any other omnibus recommendations from the past, throw them our way. Yeah, we'll take them. Caroline got in touch, said, hello, wonderful Cidership people and greetings from California. Thank you again for being the people that I take my ridiculous archer's observations to. Buckle up. This is quite ridiculous. Excellent. Come on. I recently read My Dirty California. Excellent book. Highly recommended. In this book, there is a pretty important character who turns out to be a paid hitman called Derek Fletcher. <laughs> 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 When is it set? I'm going to have a look at my dirty California. Jason Mosberg, cinematic, suspenseful, intricately plotted thriller exploring the darker side of the glamorous Golden State. Did Peter Fickling write this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is there any Lego involved? Is that his um, pseudonym? Oh, it was only bloody released in 2022, 2022. Maybe it is him. 
Jason Mosberg. And it does say that he was born in Swindon. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't. It Peter's doesn't. two favourite things are mozzarella and iceberg lettuce. So <laughs> I think... <laughs> Oh, God. Anyway. Yeah. Yes, a paid hitman called Derek Fletcher. Because my brain is a bit melted, and apparently I have too much time on my hands, I wrote to the author, Jason Mosberg, Brilliant. to inquire if this was a delightful Easter egg for Archer's listeners. <gasps> Top bloke that he turns out to be, he graciously replied, and claims that he has never listened, so it was pure coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. He did not respond to my follow-up request oh, for God. future books to feature other non-speaking characters from a radio soap opera, because in all fairness, that is a bit of a demented request. <laughs> He's gone down in my estimation now for not going, yes, I will. <laughs> this is fucking brilliant. Now, one of the storylines in the book is the search for Pandora's house that may be a gateway to other dimensions. <laughs> is this actually on Kerry Street, perhaps? <laughs> And maybe yeah. Rochelle is actually the code name for Joy's witness protection officer after Derek Fletcher was outed <laughs> as a professional hitman. Is the Derek Fletcher, Joy, Rochelle, there's a lot of slashes going on here, is the Derek Fletcher, Joy, Rochelle, my dirty California fan fiction, the crossover <laughs> that we didn't know we needed? <laughs> yes, it is. Anyhow, the book is really great. And the author is a top bloke who indulged my question. Love the pod and this great community of fellow archers, melted brain humans you have assembled, oh, Caroline. Love, 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 Caroline. If you haven't done a review for us, do one, because I'd love to see your writings in one. You are a very good writer yourself. And we have one more email from our FPL legend, Julie Scott. It says, hi, Kerry Matthew. Thanks again for your fab podcast. It really keeps me going. James Callum and I have been enjoying being part of the Fantasy Football League. James, FC James, was doing great in the first half of the season, but in his words, really dropped off in the second. <laughs> you know, I was kind of the opposite. I started really badly and then started doing really well, but the damage was done. You didn't do really well in the end. You did okay. There's no way you can compare yourself to James in reverse. I'm sorry. James was like a god of our fantasy football for so long. <laughs> she goes on <laughs> I listen to your pod every week and if James was ever mentioned I would record it and send it to him well we're mentioning now you can send him this Julie it became a lovely spark in our family group and group chats oh that's so nice yeah so she's like hoping the league rises again it will and uh, she says yeah much love Julie aka plant pot I'm sure that James was busy with other important things when he dropped off and uh, there's no way you could sustain that tremendous momentum yeah his team selection every week was insane wasn't oh, it? he was doing so well really good please uh send me some tips james please for next season thank you can i confess something at one point i just started jamesing my team i oh, started looking pathetic. And I, was, I was just looking what james did <laughs> and copied it some comments on Patreon from last week. Nina said, Kerry, yes. What the fuck did Alistair do? I think that's in response to his <laughs> rescue mission. Yes. No one's told us yet what he did do. Bloody PTSD. Fucking pull your socks up. Kerry will be running for reform in Brighton. <laughs> no. Oh, by the way, we, we're going to do a Cider Shared election night special. Imagine. But we are. We literally are. We are going to do that. It's going to go out on Patreon. Uh, we've got some guests coming on. So we're, we're still thinking about exactly how to structure that. But, One of uh, whom is not Keir Starmer. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Anyway, Viv said, yes, agree that George would have been better to come clean from the start. Problem now is he's got himself into a web of lies and that's going to be difficult to get out of. As my mother always said, you have to have a good memory to be a liar. And it's getting to the point where George is going to start forgetting what he did and said to various people. Oh, and do you know who hasn't got a good memory where lies are concerned? I do know, Kerry. Richard said a couple of things. He said, I think we all know what song Kenton kept putting on on the karaoke to distract Fallon and Jolene. And then he's written, Midnight Sun bids Moore's farewell, retreats from charging dusk, which is actually the opening lines of Grendel by Marillion. <laughs> 
Oh, I want to hear that now. Yeah, I was thinking we should do a Grendel challenge and see how long you can, how far you get into it. What now? No, no, no. We'll do it on the Patreon. Did you see that little exchange I, we had with Music Prick Dad? Yes, I did. I yeah. bloody added you into it. Richard Webb picked up on the Alice comment I made, a crime she did not commit. Ten years ago, a recovering alcoholic was sent to prison by Felpersham Magistrates Court for a crime she didn't commit. This woman promptly escaped from a maximum security stockade to join the Borsetshire Underground. Today, still wanted by Harrison Burns, she survives a soldier of fortune. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find her, maybe you can hire the Alice Team. Catty said, oh, no, I didn't intend to put Kerry on the spot. I am grateful for any impression she'd want to spontaneously do, and I'll keep my trap shut. Oh, no, never keep your trap shut. Just like, I'm just going to say what it, how it is. There's been a couple of times when we've been recording where Kerry has said something and the, the sound has dropped out, and I said, Kerry, can you just say that again? She's like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Everything is honest with Kerry. There's no filter whatsoever. Like yeah. Yeah. And Mandy said, that skip replacing the heifer with Jill was Friggin' hilarious. Brilliant mm. work. Great episode. So, Kerry, we've actually got four new patrons this week. Wow. I must never presume that there will be any, but it's always such a treat when you say that there are. I know. Uh, first up, Audrey Cameron. Welcome, Audrey Welcome Cameron, Cameron, to the Cider Shed Patreon. Patreon. Thanks so much for all your help. Anything, Anything, else, you Anything else you need, just... Gotcha. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Audrey was part of our FPL league, wasn't she? Yeah. Thank you very much, Audrey. Much appreciated. And then we've got Mazza, or I believe is Marianne. Hey there, Marianne. Thanks for honoring us with your company in the Cider Shed Patreon. We're very, very grateful. Mazza! Oh, welcome, Marianne. Welcome, Marianne. Thank you. Ian Morris. Aha. Uh -huh. Ian, Ian Morris. Morris. Thanks, Thanks so, much so much for becoming a Cider Shed Patreon. We're lucky to have you. Thanks for all your support. Welcome, Ian. Hello, Ian. Kerry, little drum roll for this one. Nat Ogle. Yo, yo, yo. Nat Ogle. Nat in the Badger House. Here he is. Thanks for becoming a Cider Shed Patron, Nat. We are so happy you've joined us. Yes. He does listen. <laughs> he was in our fantasy football league. In fact, didn't he win it? I got a feeling Chris Charlson won it. Ah, they were neck and neck, weren't they? We've always thought, is Nat Ogle actually a listener? Because I haven't found that he's doing the tweet along, blah, blah, blah. And here he is as a Patreon. Hello, Nat. Hello, Nat. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone, for getting involved on the Patreon. We really appreciate it. Kerry, another way you can support the pod is by writing a review. We have a new five-star review, and it's from Pip Tees, who's a Brighton resident, a very lovely one. And the title of it is Wonderful. However, I disagree entirely <laughs> with what Pip Tees has written, apart from the first bit. A great sideways look at the arches. I listen straight after the omnibus on a Sunday. Five stars. And I, Kerry, would just like to take a moment to say that I've taken a U-turn on my thoughts about Adam and realised that I actually love him and all his logisms. I'm kind of with Pip Tees. Oh my God. Why? When Adam appears in a scene now, <laughs> I actually get a little bit of a, a goose pimply excitement. <laughs> because of what, though? Because of there is a free song because, you know, I think secretly, subconsciously, the free song is because, you know, there's going to be a badness, bad quality. I always listen through the ear prism of Kerry to Adam. <laughs> And if a new prism is a thing, let me know. <laughs> I think he's doing a little bit better. I think since, every, oh. since everyone sent me the Baldur's Gate stuff, I've kind of had a bit of a growing respect for him. Jesus. When I saw his acceptance speech, I thought he was actually quite funny. Kerry didn't agree. He was all right in that. But I, we've got, right, 
there's been recent scenes with him, with Alice, where it's not been good. I'm sorry, but yeah, we can di we can disagree. I'm glad, Pip, that you are enjoying Adam. In all other regards of your life, you seem to have very good taste. So you know, maybe I could be wrong. Okay, that's as far that's as far as I'm going. Thanks very much, Piptees. I um, follow Piptees on Instagram and he's got a wonderful account with lots of great content. Oh, definitely. Absolute artist he is. Wonderful beard as well. Oh, his eyes as well. Very, very gorgeous man. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, yeah. Just, I was just thinking about his eyes. They are good, aren't they? They are. They're very piercing, aren't they? They're like yeah. uh, Robert Powell in that. Not Robert Palmer. Robert Powell as Jesus. And it, and his partner was on the Great British Sewing Bee. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. That's right. And he was lovely too on the programme. All right. So, yeah, if you can support us by writing a review on iTunes, you can support us by going to www.patreon.com forward slash The Cider Shed. You can follow us on our socials, which is Instagram at The Cider Shed Pod. Kerry, we are that on Twitter as well, aren't we? Yep. Side, what, so at the com. Is it? <laughs> no, I just said it's literally the same. Kerry. Oh, God. I'm sorry, sorry, you have to bear with Kerry because she's had a really rough week. I have. Um, and, um, yeah. Due to a technical hitch, I've kept her up way past her bedtime. Oh, no. So, yeah. yeah. I've, got, I've had so, COVID. Oh, I've got COVID now. And something else has happened, for which I can't go to necessarily yet, but I might do uh, another time. Um, on Blue Sky, it's at the side of shed pod dot b sky dot social. And on Twitter, it's at the Cider Shed Pod. That's what we are. Yeah. Yes. And if you want to send us an email, which four people did, we will read them out. It's hello at the Cider Shed dot com. So thanks, everyone, for tuning in this week. And we will be with you shortly. See you later. Bye. Bye. Hello.